Hello everyone, welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on various topics of disaster management, geography and several other topics on our channel, the Geo Ecologist. If you are new to our channel, please go to our playlist section for the earlier content and videos. Now, in today's session on disaster management, we are going to talk about the much awaited topic that you all requested in earlier comments that is related to risk, its concept, risk assessment techniques and also risk management. And if you have not already subscribed our channel, please do subscribe also don't forget to share the videos with others and don't forget to please comment as how did you like the video so now let's understand this concept of risk and assessment and management in this particular session so we'll be going one by one first we'll be talking more on the conceptual ground theoretical ground then we'll be talking about the methods and techniques of risk assessment and then we'll be talking about the risk management which is part of disaster management so in simplistic way of understanding whenever we use the word risk what comes to our mind is something bad is supposed to happen and it's the possibility of that so when we say possibility it's basically about the unconformity that we always have in our mind that what is not confirmed what is not sure there is something called uncertainty that's there so if you observe risk involves uncertainty about a particular impact or implication of activity or phenomena with respect to something which is of greater importance to us so risk is related to humanistic concept if you observe so human values such as human health well-being wealth property or environment so whenever we talk about risk it's always a human centric approach and when it is human centric approach we need to look into the interdisciplinarity of the risk so you must have seen this particular diagram at so many places what does it say it tells us that risk is an overlapping factor it's a cumulative impact factor which we need to assess so it has vulnerability it has hazard and it has exposure component now we'll have separate videos for vulnerability as well as for exposure but right now we need to understand that these components work together to give us the idea of risk so hazard is basically which can affect and has a dangerous position for human beings a dangerous phenomena then vulnerability has so many components which will be doing in the particular video that we are going to come up with so you have physical social economic environmental and so many other aspects of vulnerability that we need to talk about and we have exposures and they include human structures population agriculture business assets and so many other particular parameters of human society together when we overlap them we get the concept of the risk so how do we assess the risk how do we understand it let's look into it so for example most of us have looked into landslides that is very commonly occurring phenomena and we say that particular area has more risk of landslide particular area or particular slope has less risk of landslide so this is basic way of looking into how do we characterize or criteria for particularly categorizing our risk assessment so whenever we say that negative impact of a phenomena is concerned we always talk about the possibility and the probability so when we say possibility and probability what is it possibility is a general term a very common word of something which is not sure not certain but there is a chance of occurrence but when we measure that chance of occurrence there is probability coming into so even if probability is low maybe the impact could be high so now if you look into different kinds of slopes here five diagrams have been given and there are different levels of risk involved on each of these particular slope which is completely barren rocky surface where you have soil where you have mix of rock and then is a collapse landslide possible where you have soil over the bedrock then you have rock soil with debris and which is a colluvial slope so every particular slope if you observe in this particular area that is landslide risk assessment when we do it has a different degree of risk that is probable so that is where we need to say that which areas are more probable in terms of risk for landslide and which are less but it doesn't mean that we don't prepare for it we need to prepare for even if it is the slightest of chances for disaster management so if you observe here what we have done at international level we have a UNDRR United Nations Office for Disaster Risk Reduction which gives us the ideas definitions concepts theories for disaster risk assessment and management so the potential loss of life injury or destroyed or damaged asset which could occur to a system 
society or community look at these words very carefully these are all human centered words that you say here right so risk is obviously in terms of human beings that we say over a period of time and that's why we say it is a possibility where determination could be probabilistic so determined probabilistic as a function of hazard exposure vulnerability capacity all these factors play a very important role in risk assessment and that is what und rr gives us then what we did is in 2015 we made a framework that is called sendai framework for disaster risk reduction that is for 2015 to 2030 so it has certain agendas it has certain points that we need to look into so if you look into this particular sendai framework we have to reduce certain things and we have to increase certain things for sustainable living for risk free society or less risky society so what we need to reduce is global disaster mortality number of affected people economic losses in terms of GDP and damage to critical infrastructure and service disruption is what we need to reduce and what we need to increase is number of countries with national and local disaster risk reduction strategies by 2020 then international cooperation to developing countries and third world countries and then availability and accessibility remember these two concepts availability and accessibility to early warning systems and disaster risk reduction information systems so that's where Sendai framework gives us an idea of what we need to work till 2030 but remember these things are part of integrated systems that work together so we need to look into those integrated systems now so what is important here to consider is social and economic context why because I told you risk reduction is part of humanistic concept so disaster risk reduction here people needs to be involved so people do not necessarily share same perceptions of risk and their under lying risk factor so if you travel on a road for example remember a driver has different perceptions of risk somebody drives very casually somebody is very serious somebody is going in a faster lane but we know how many road accidents happen every year so risk perception is individual to society so when we build a society risk perception also develop with particular society so what you observe there is something called acceptable risk or tolerable risk so this is one category of risk which is very important in terms of extent to which disaster risk is deemed acceptable. How much risk is acceptable risk or tolerable risk will depend upon certain parameters. For example, existing social, economic, political, cultural, technological and environmental condition. So that is the amount of risk that we need to take in order to develop around us. But then there is something called residual risk. Now this is very important here. This is that remains even after effective disaster risk reduction method that we apply so that is the amount of risk that is always there that's pertaining to our disaster management here so disaster risk reduction measures are in place but still we have certain residues there right so we need to look into the examination of these particular risks so presence of these residual risk implies what it implies that we need to continue in terms of the development and support of effective capabilities for emergency situations preparedness response recovery all these particular systems and hence comes the need for disaster management where risk management is as important so understanding risk assessment now now many people ask the question what are the methods what are the techniques to actually assess the risk so let's understand the risk assessment how do we assess it how do we study it what is the research behind it what are the methodologies behind it and there are numerous methodologies some are quantitative in nature some are qualitative in nature some are overlapping in nature so risk management if you look into as per these scientists here Coburn, Spence, Pumonis in 1994 they categorize two words here risk assessment and risk evaluation where risk management is concerned so first what we are looking going to look into is measurements of risk this is very important how do you measure the risk in terms of probabilities in terms of numbers in terms of deaths so first thing that we look into is risk assessment using statistical models now there are numerous statistical models and basic criteria here is two 
वन इज दैट रिस्क कैन बी मेजर इन टर्म्स ऑफ नंबर ऑफ विक्टिम्स फॉर पास्ट हेज आर्डस इवेंट एंड देन फ्यूचर प्लानिंग ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ दैट एंड द सेकेंड इज विच इज मल्टीप्लीकेटिव मॉडल वेर न्यूमरस फैक्टर्स कॉन्टेक्ट आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इन विच कॉन्टेक्स हाउ मेनी पीपल वेर इफेक्टेड एंड देन वी डू द असेसमेंट सो हियर वॉट यू ऑब्जर्व फॉर एग्जाम्पल रेट ऑफ अर्बन ग्रोथ कुड बी टेकन एज अ फैक्टर फॉर डिटरमाइनिंग लॉस ऑफ लाइफ फ्रॉम earthquakes now remember syria turkey earthquake or the other earthquakes that have happened in recent times the urban levels and urban development could be one factor and there could be numerous other factors associated or for that matter access to water supply in case of droughts so here is case specific factorization where lot of different factors are put together factor analysis principal component analysis and many other statistical tools are used for this particular multiplicative method so here is the glimpse of the methodology that i have given you can pause the video and if you want to actually do research you can note it down but i have just given you for a reading here that this k value is computed when we say multiplicative model and if in the normal model where risk is calculated it's basically physical exposure phxp that we say so here k value is number of people killed by the disaster c is multiplicative constant and parameters are to be incorporated in the formula so what we observe the second aspect the second is analytical systems model for risk assessment the first one was quantitative which was purely statistical now in this you have numerous models one of them is effect model now the word itself tells us we are talking about what effects so here disaster potential calculations are done basis of effect models and remember these are idealized situations that if something happens what is the potential effect that is going to happen in that particular area then you have something called quotient method the word itself tells you there is something called quotient there is something which is statistical in nature again so here ecological risk assessment where quotient methods are applied and there are two different words here if you observe loc and pec so if you observe level of concern and predicted non effect concentration so these are the ways of looking into the quotient methods then what we have is preliminary risk analysis i'm sure if you are into disaster management studies this is the very basic one that we do is preliminary risk analysis so whenever there is something which we are planning any development any particular project we have to do the risk analysis and here frequency consequence diagrams skiong diagrams are made here right so so here causation is very important ranking of hazards is very important that's how we do it then we have another model here hazard and operability studies it's called has model so here for chemical industries and other industries in 1970s this has model also became very popular then further if you look into failure mode and effect analysis it's called fmea or fmeca this was also one of the techniques applied which gained importance in terms of aerospace and military industry in terms of their risk assessment then what you observe is tree based techniques now what is this tree based techniques there are numerous tree based techniques so look into it fall tree analysis is called fta event tree analysis eta then you have cause consequence analysis cca then you have management oversight risk tree that is mot safety management organization review technique smot and there are several others for one example i'll give you is fta was supposed to be used for risk assessment of intercontinental ballistic missile launch control systems and the risks involved in that so there are numerous methods that you observe here and then what you see is the third one which is very important for disaster management people which is hazard risk assessment models and mapping especially if you're coming from geography or geology background you'll observe these techniques in common so these are the list here earthquake risk assessment what do we do epicentral maps radial maps so where is the location and we create radius and look into the risks around that epicenter then we have landslide risk assessment where zonation maps are being done then you have drought risk assessment where you have ndvi and several other indexes as well used through gis analysis you have volcano hazard assessment again gis based analysis flood risk zonations is being done using gis and remote sensing then you have cyclone flood model modeling where you have surge heights being taken into account and surge decay coefficient sdc is calculated and mapped that till what extent by what time is the surge going to come into the land then what we observe is the next question that when we have so many techniques when we have so many assessment models then how do we actually reduce risk so for this we have a conceptual diagram which you can understand in simple right now we are here according to undrr 
and we need to be here. So what is the system here? This is disaster management where you have destructive systems and we need to have response. We need to have prevention and gradually we'll be moving towards sustainable living and here you have regenerative system which is sustainable system. So three important points under this is avoid construction of newer risk. Whenever you're planning something new, remember new risks should not be created, minimized, address the already existing risks and share and spread risk prevention to disaster losses and create awareness program here, right? This is very important. Three important points to reduce the risk. And now comes finally the risk management. So when you look into management again, it is again an interdisciplinary concept. So here application of disaster risk reduction policies and strategies hand in hand is needed. So ideas of hazard, vulnerability and exposure together will give us the ideas of risk management. So you have social functionality, human health, then human rights and economy and environment together coming to look into risk management. So if you observe, the first important point here is prospective disaster risk management. Right. So here the word is prospect to avoid developmental risks that we have. We need to have better land use planning, disaster resistant water supply systems and several others, for example. Then we have corrective disaster risk management. Now, if you have done something, but it is wrong, you need to be having corrective measures. So retrofitting of critical infrastructure and also looking into the relocation aspects of population for that matter. Then we have something called compensatory disaster risk management. Now this is compensation. So it includes preparedness response, recovery and other activities. Here you have insurance, here you have reinsurance and social safety nets. Then what we have is community based disaster risk management, which is very popular because we talk about communities which have greater perception of their own risks associated with their own localized hazards are better to cope with it. So we need to look into the affected communities and look into the planning, implementation, monitoring and evaluation using indigenous technologies and knowledge. So here you have local indigenous people approach towards disaster risk reduction and traditional indigenous and local knowledge have to be having an inventory in the area and people need to implement it to reduce the risk and then finally we have the disaster risk management plans goals specific objectives these are very important points for disaster risk management so i hope that you understood well and if you like the video please do comment and please share these informative videos more and more so that we can create awareness more about disaster risk reduction so now when we have discussed various aspects of the risk its concept risk assessment techniques and methods in the sessions to come we'll be talking more on other aspects such as exposure sensitivity vulnerability so continue with this series and also please don't forget to share the videos with others and also if you have not already pressed the like button do press the like button and please do subscribe to our channel so all the best wishes to all the learners take care